Hi, Susanna here with the Are They All Yours blog at StephenAndersonFamily.com. Today I want to show you how to make yogurt in the Instant Pot. It's very fast, it's very easy. And in fact, the Instant Pot, if you have one of the newer models, has a yogurt setting that makes it even easier. So um, we're going to make yogurt from one gallon of milk. Makes about three quarts of yogurt when all is said and done. Um, you simply pour one gallon of milk into the insert of the pot. I have here the 8 quart instant pot, but the directions are the same for the 6 quart. This would not work for the 3 quart, you'd have to size it down accordingly, maybe make half the amount. Now, just a little tip, I never pour into the pot while the pot is in the instant pot. I always make a habit to pour outside of it. The reason for that being is that I want to be in a habit of never pouring directly into here because if I were to accidentally pour it straight into the liner because for whatever reason maybe I'm distracted and the pot is not actually in, if liquid were to get into the outside it would destroy the instant pot. So I've made it a habit to never pour directly into the pot. I always pour into the insert when it's next to the pot. So I'm just going to add one gallon of milk to this. And you can use any milk you like. You can use whole, you can use skim, you can use any milk. We just use regular whole milk because that's all we have. We get raw milk from the dairy, so it's not skimmed or anything. Okay, so one gallon goes in. And there's two steps that you need for making yogurt. First, you need to get this to about 180 degrees and then it needs to cool back down to about 104. Now the instant pot helps with that because you basically what you do is you hit the yogurt and it says eight hours. That's for incubating it. If you hit adjust, it says boil. If you were to hit it again, it would say 24. That's for a longer incubation. So I'm trying to do the first step right now, which is to bring this to a boil. Or it's not really boiling. It'll bring it to 180 degrees. So that's what I want right now. And I'm just simply going to... It takes 10 seconds and it starts, so now it's on the boil cycle. You can put the lid on. It does not need to be locked and pressurized. So you can use that. If you do, I highly recommend either taking out the ring, the sealing ring here, or having one separate for yogurt and dessert. The reason for that is that this ring is made of silicone, and because of that, it can absorb flavors and tastes. In fact, this used to be a clear silicone ring and you can tell that it's kind of brownish from all the food I've made in it. The first time I made yogurt was immediately after having made onion soup, French onion soup in my instant pot, and the yogurt came out great, but it tasted like onions. So after that I learned that the lid is not necessary at all. Um, you can simply put a plate on it because it's not actually pressurizing anything. It is just using the instant pot to heat the milk to a certain temperature. And when it is heated to that temperature, it will beep and tell you that it's done. And then you go from there to the next step. So here the boil is now done and you can see the dial after it stopped changed to reading yogurt. And here is the hot milk. I will check the temperature real quick with one of these little quick instant read thermometers. The temperature right now is approximately 140 degrees still. It's already sat here for a little bit. So I'm going to pull this out of here to help it cool. And I just set it on a cooling rack and put a plate on it. And I'm just going to keep checking that. It will take approximately an hour to cool down to where I want it, which is between 100 and 104 degrees. If you're in a hurry and you need to get it cooled down faster, you can set it in a sink with cold water, you know, bring the water up to here, and that will cool it down much faster. Okay, so here the milk has now cooled enough to be able to put the cultures in. The temperature is right around 100 degrees, maybe 98, which is okay, even if it's a little bit low 100, because the Instant Pot will incubated at the right temperature. So basically, just to recap, we have a gallon of milk here. I heated it in the Instant Pot on the boil setting until it said it was done. I took it out. I allowed it to cool down to around 100, 104 degrees. You don't want to go above 106 for sure. I will now take this and put it back in the Instant Pot. And I'm going to add yogurt culture to it. You can use any 
plain unsweetened yogurt. It can be full fat, non fat, whatever. That's just important that the only thing that's in it is just the yogurt because you want those live active cultures that are in the yogurt. So it says Greek yogurt, but like I said, Greek yogurt is just yogurt that's been strained longer. So you can make regular yogurt with a Greek yogurt starter, as it were. So for a gallon, you want to use about a half cup of ready yogurt to incubate it. So I'm going to put about a half cup in here and just stir that in. That will give it the live active cultures and that's why you have to cool the milk down to now where it can, um, the cultures can actually survive. So that's why you put the yogurt cultures in. I'm going to put this lid back on. We're going to go back to the yogurt setting. It's on boil. We definitely don't want that. So we're going to hit adjust. This is for 24 hour incubation. I don't like that. So I'm going with the eight hour incubation. And it will take 10 seconds for it to turn on. There it goes. And you can now see the countdown clock will count down. And when it gets to the eight hours, it will tell me that it's done. At that point, I will take the yogurt. I will take this liner with the yogurt in it and refrigerate it overnight to help cool it and set it before I put it in the strainer to strain the yogurt out. Okay, so the eight hours of incubation are over now and the instant pot beeped. And you can see here that the yogurt has incubated, but it is not quite set up. It's a little set up, but still very liquidy. So I'm going to put this in the fridge overnight now to cool and to set up before straining it to make it even a little bit more thick. Okay, so here now I have the yogurt that um, I made from the one gallon of milk by first getting the milk hot, letting it cool down to 104, adding the yogurt cultures, incubating it in the Instant Pot for eight hours, and then putting a lid on it and refrigerating it overnight. And you can see that it has already firmed up considerably. And there's some way separating here at the front. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera. It's sloshing around here in the front. But it's still too liquid. If I were to stir all that way in right now, it would be much too liquid for us. So I have this yogurt strainer that I use. Now it's called a Greek yogurt maker. But it's not really a Greek yogurt maker. It's just a yogurt strainer. It doesn't make the yogurt. It only strains the yogurt. And the only difference between Greek yogurt and regular yogurt is that just the Greek yogurt is strained for longer and becomes thicker, so it becomes higher in protein just because there's less whey left in it. Um, whey, W-H-E-Y, that's that yellowish liquid that comes off when you make yogurt. Um, it separates from the actual yogurt and it's just that yellow liquid. So depending on, you can do it anywhere from three to 24 hours and the longer you go, the drier and firmer your yogurt becomes and Greek yogurt is just strained for longer so it's thicker than regular yogurt. My kids don't care for Greek yogurt so I only typically do it overnight. Now this particular model can make about two quarts at a time so I have to do this in two batches. Um, this is the stainless steel basket model which is a little bit more than the plastic mesh version. Um, in hindsight, had I known that the rest of the basket is still made of plastic, I thought this was also stainless steel. This is still plastic. The container obviously is plastic that the whey goes into. I at least thought the entire basket is made of stainless steel to put the yogurt in. It's not. So had I realized that when I ordered it, I would have just gone with the plastic one all around because I don't think the mesh makes that big of a difference. So um, I will put the link to both the stainless steel and the plastic model in the description of the video below. But I highly recommend this. It is a lot easier. You could strain your yogurt with a cheesecloth. Or if you do not care about having liquid yogurt, like if you're only using it for smoothies and such, then you can also just not strain it at all. But we are actually eating the yogurt, so I want it strained because otherwise it's too liquid for the kids to eat, especially once you add honey to it the honey will break it down more and then um, make it more liquid and it just makes a big mess. So I like to strain the yogurt. So I'm putting about half of it in here and you can already see the whey starting to separate and dripping out here. And I'm just going to let this sit in the refrigerator for approximately eight hours and then move it to a container. 
Okay, so here is the yogurt strainer. And I put about two quarts of yogurt into it. It was more like one and a half. I put two quarts of yogurt into it, one and a half quarts of yogurt into it. And I let it strain overnight. And you can see here the whey in the bottom and the yogurt in the top. So I'm going to simply pour off the whey. And there are all sorts of things you can do with the whey that you can just look up online of what to do with your whey. It is healthy, so don't just throw it away. And then here we have the yogurt. Now, depending on how long you let it strain for, you will have yogurt that will just keep getting firmer and firmer. You can get it almost to the consistency of cream cheese if you let it sit very long. Bring it into a quart container here. Okay, so here we have the whey and the finished yogurt. It's just gonna go in the fridge now and it is done. So it is just that easy to make yogurt in your Instant Pot. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below.